Okay, Welcome right. back, everybody, to Near Mint Condition. Old reader, new reader. I'm sorry I interrupted Amanda. Go ahead, Amanda. I'm so sorry. I thought, I thought we had agreed with me. <laughs> no, nope, you just go. You, you started. It, I'm pretty sure one of you said, hey, you lead. And I said, all right, sounds good. All right. Uh, am, I, am I good? Can I yeah, keep going? Yeah, you're good. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. So back on me. This is Omar. Uh, this is Old Reader, New Readers. And with me are my lovely co-host, Amanda. Hey, guys. <laughs> And Maddie. Hey. And today we are talking about this book right here. This is Matt Fractions and David Aha. Aha. Oh, is it Aha? Okay. Aha. Aja. Aja. I don't know how to say his name. So, uh, gonna... Hawkeye. <laughs> Hawk, <laughs> Hawk guy. Um, so oh, so we can we talk about how nice this oh. looks under the dust cover? Yeah, sure. I'm going to take the dust cover off now that we're done, too, because I don't want to you're, ruin it. So. You're the one that likes to smell and sniffs books and oh, feel books. Well, listen, it's important that a book feels nice and feels very nice. Just stare, guys. Stare into that yeah. and try. Okay. I'm going to hit Y'all already everyone. know that I am team no dust jacket. I hate them. We should <laughs> stop dust jackets. You are crazy. And I a lose center. them all on my regular books, so yeah. No, I'm you. Okay with we do not. Them. We keep our dust jackets because it keeps the dust off these books. Anyway. Okay. This book is also available in trade paperback. It's available in two hardcovers. Uh, it's available in Comixology and Marvel Unlimited. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, just really, really quick. Um, this is the very, like, I think I want to say it's like the fourth volume of Hawkeye. Uh, the very first few are just miniseries. This is the first, like, ongoing series. It's 22 issues. And it continued past this run. Jeff Lemire took over the book after Matt Fraction left. This is after Avengers Disassembled, so it's after House of M. It's after Clint died and came back from the dead. It's also after he found out that his wife, who he thought was dead at the end of Avengers, uh, West Coast Avengers, was actually a scroll. Because, hey, retcon, it's Marvel Comics. That's what they do. So Bobby is back, but I don't think they're married anymore because he ended up... Well, I can't remember where, where they, they stand. They get divorced. She, yeah, on oh, Valentine's that's right. Day. The, yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay, oh, spoilers. Yeah, 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 spoilers, guys. There's going to be spoilers. <laughs> well, I didn't know... Mockingbird sometime because that that does a really nice, quick kind of recap of their relationship. And it's you talked about the, the, the two small paperback volumes of yes. Mockingbird that I have with yes. the... Cover up, so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's it, do that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's really weird because that book also retcons a lot of stuff from the past. Uh, that's funny. Much, that outfit and that hair that's in this book. So I'm pro that. Much, much like this, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So let's let's dive into this. And this book kicks off with the issue of Young Avengers presents. Uh, Young yes. Avengers was one of my favorite series to come out of Avengers Disassembled, and. Unfortunately, the guy that was writing it ended up leaving the book, and he came back for a 12-issue series. And then they decided to do the Marvel Comics Presents, and issue six was written by Matt Fraction and drawn by the legendary Alan Davis. Mm -hmm. And it's just a story about how, now that Clint is back, he wants his uh, bow back from the new girl, Kate Bishop, calling herself Hawkeye. Because at the time, remember, he was dead. But now he is Ronan, and he's like, no, I don't want to be Ronan anymore. I want to be Hawkeye again. And I think, Mar- I remember Marvel's excuse was like, hey, look, DC has like five Robins and two Batgirls. We can do the same thing. We can have two heroes be named the same character. And that's kind of how they got away with using two Hawkeyes. Not Lady Hawkeye. Hawkeye, Hawkeye. Hawkeye, Hawkeye. And this book did really make me miss how much I loved Young Avengers, by the way. And then we get to the meat and potatoes of the book, and that is issue one of Hawkeye. So, uh, Amanda, you want to do a really quick synopsis of what happens here? Yeah, so um, basically the way the three of us read it, um, I read it through the omnibus, and so anyone who has the omnibus and is not familiar with it or has read it knows that the issues are not in, in number order. They kind of go in order to make sense of the story or the general overall arc. Um, so you might have where you have one through three, and there's like a six and then a five and then a seven, 17 annuals, the annual stuck in there. Like, so basically it kind of goes in order, kind of doesn't go in order. And, um, so we're not going to do that type of, uh, re- we're just going to do a brief overview recap of it. Um, yeah, so that'd maybe- be interesting for me because I read by issue order because I didn't have the omnibus with me. I read at work. 
don't tell anyone. So I read through Marvel Unlimited and read it issue by issue, which just so everybody home knows, real quick before we get into this, mm-hmm. it did not detract from my experience at all. I still really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed how it was paced issue to issue. That's not a problem. So I'm interested in seeing how we sort of compare and contrast our experiences. I, I don't think, I mean, that's the way most of us read it when it was first came out anyway, issue by issue. But his story isn't like sequential. Like there is no, no I mean, it no. bounces back and forth all over the place. Yes, whether yeah. you read it in single issues or whether you read it in collected edition. Um, it just bounces. Yeah. So and go ahead. Yeah, so basically, um, like Omar said, this story is um, does happen in a lot of flash forwards, a lot of flashbacks. It's told in a similar uh, narrative to movies like Eternal Sunshine of Spots Mine or 500 Days of Summer, where you're kind of moving back and forth in the narrative to, and a lot of the issues, especially issues like one through three start in media race, which means it's in the middle, the beginning of it starts right in the middle of the action, and then you play catch up in the rest of the issue to get to the first page of that issue on where we're standing. Um, so basically Clint Barton, like he said, is back from the dead. Um, he's get ready to get on with his life and, you know, pick back up the pieces. And he is in this, I guess, apartment building in Brooklyn that is controlled by a mob, the tracksuit Dracula. Is that what they called? <laughs> They're a so Russian cool. mob. And they're like, hey, bros, hey, bros, bro, hey, bro. And that's my yeah, best Russian accent that I can do, guys. Very like, flop, squatting, <laughs> tracksuit wearing. Oh, man, Not if I hear bro me. one more time, buddy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so basically, these guys, you know, they take advantage of the the laws and stuff as far as rent's concerned. And you have a lot of the renters who are good people and they can't afford all the price hikes and things like that. And so Clint, because he's a lot of money, um, decides to go- buy the building from them and become the superintendent and owner of this massive apartment building in Brooklyn. And so that's kind of the overarching story is his fight and, and struggle between the tracksuit Dracula Russian gang. Um, and of course, a lot of the stories take place in the apartment building as well with different um, with different tenants um, like Gil or Grills, a oh, gentleman yeah. who lived there oh, and the woman and her two children um, and a couple other folks as well. So he has a lot of those character and the moments. Most important character, Arrow. Oh, or Lucky. Yes, Lucky. the dog. Best, best dog ever. Oh, that that dog has like nine lives. He's like a cat. Uh, <laughs> just can't die. Yeah. Um, and of course, it also, while it's also centering around this overarching story, it also s- focuses on the relationship between Hawkeye and Hawkeye, the other one, Kate Bishop. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Hawkeye and Hawkeye. Um, so I didn't, and going into this, I did not realize she was going to play such a significant role because I didn't go into this with any knowledge of what the story was about. I just figured because Clint's on the cover. It was about him. So I yeah, was pleasantly too. surprised. I was yeah. really happy about it, because I've read Kate Bishop's Hawkeye. And I saw this oh. movie, I was like, oh, I'm sure this is going to be really cool, but I wasn't expecting her as much. Yes, exactly. I was very happy about that. Like The, the way these two play off each other <sighs> also is, is really cool. Yeah, part of me is like, no, they can't. Like My fanfic in person oh, in front of me, I'm like, they can't <laughs> ship them. I'm like, no, they're friends. Just let them be friends, Amanda. Stop doing it. She's too young for him anyways. So, <laughs> um, but they have a really good relationship. Plus, he's with apparently he's with Jessica Drew, um, Spider Woman, which is pretty interesting. Um, and you you get to see a lot of those relationships play out through this series as well. Um, so those are those are the two main oh. overarching things: is his relationship with Kate and how they kind of move forward as like a team. They break apart um, during it when he's you know she calls him like pretty much a car wreck waiting to happen and I, it's a metaphor that kind of is literal considering that he is involved in numbers a number of car crashes throughout yeah. this entire saga <laughs> and that is really kind of where his life is at right now um he's there's an issue where he's struggling to set up a dvr with tony stark apparently tony stark doesn't know how to work a dvr um even though he's iron man um there's 
issues that like there's issues where the first ish the first page he's caught with his pants down getting held up by the tracksuit dracula gang and he's like wait a minute this is ridiculous like that's just how his life is in this whole story and just trying to get him to see the hero that he is and move forward with his life is pretty much the overarching theme of this entire omnibus right yeah, and we also get a lot of instances, like glimpses into his own past, which I really appreciate too. I didn't know much about Hawkeye before this, really. I mean, I watched the movies. Oh my gosh, sorry, my pug is like losing his mind. Okay, um, but just his like relationship with his, with his brother. Sorry, I was getting, like I'm checking him out, make sure he's not gonna. <laughs> he's like, go do it, go do it. <laughs> Stop it, Moose. Anyways, but like his his relationship with his brother, and then also relationships in his past. We already talked about. Um, we, we've talked about Spider Woman. We've talked about his ex-wife, because they yeah. all show up at kind of at the same time after he meets this other redhead. Then it's like all three women show up in a very interesting way and not very happy with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like seeing that sort of um, exploration into all of that. Although I was surprised to see Mockingbird, because my only instance of reading Mockingbird is like the current paperback? yeah stuff, and so all of them look so. 50s, 60s, and I was just really confused. Yeah, is it just the art style? Um, which issue was that? Oh, oh boy. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's like seven? Nope. I'll look I'll look for it. You just keep yeah, talking. They come in and Black Widow's got this big hair, right? Beehive, I mean, like, yeah. Like, <laughs> and like then, when she and first the appeared in the has, original like, comic books? Yeah, everyone looks like they like they used to, and so I was That's really right. confused. If you guys yeah. look at that, yeah. There you go. Amanda's I holding it up. Hallucinating at first. Yeah. I was very confused. Uh, that's honestly probably the way they looked back then. Um, I did have a question for you, Maddie. Yeah. So was is this <laughs> during this issue, issue uh, fifteen? Is that Annie Wu? Or I'm sorry, issue eight. Yes. So that is so Annie you- Wu. She also draws because her art's really cool. Well, Annie, so, yeah, because Annie Wu does um, she does some Star Wars stuff, I think. Yeah, I love her covers. They're, yeah, she did uh, the reminds cover me of uh, what, what's his name? I, I didn't, um, Adrian Alphonse, the Runaways artist. I really like it. Yes. And Josh, a little bit of Josh Middleton too, in there. And we it's didn't really talk to her clean. in C two E two, but Annie Wu was there. She was there, yeah. But she has a black. She has Black Canary art also. Yeah. So she did those. Um, I, I guess New Fifty Two Black Canary runs. Okay. Um, I didn't know she was doing then, some of this stuff in here. Yeah, it was. I was surprised when I saw her name. I was like, I recognize that name because we've seen. I remember walking past her booth at C two E two. So, yeah. Um, I, I, okay. So, I really like the relationship between him and Kate. What you two had mentioned. There's a moment where they're in the car. They're going to the funeral of a character, and we. Cause I think we were just talk. We're not going to break it down by issue by issue, but pretty much. Uh, what happens is Clint ends, ends up buying this apartment complex from the Russians, and they're like, no, we want it back. And he was like, no. So this kind of breaks out this all-out war between him and them. And one of his tenants gets killed in the process by the clown, I think that's his name. This creepy guy with the warp, uh, face paint. Pazzi is his name. Yeah, but I think I think they within the within the comic I think they refer to him as the clown. This guy right here. Yeah. Uh, so Gil, Grills, this Girls. guy right here, one of my favorite characters, and we'll and we'll talk about our favorite issues as we go back because it is very hard to talk about this. Uh, Chronicle, we're just yeah. mainly focusing on the overall arc, and then we can focus on our favorite issues and what we liked about this and what we didn't like. Uh, so he gets killed by them, and and now it's kind of like an all-out war, and that's where he gets his brother back, right? Like all these characters from his past come back and I'll talk about the way that that is written. Yeah. So Barney, that's a little hint at that too. Sorry. Barney comes back. Oh, it's okay. Barney, Barney comes back into his life and yep. helps, helps him out with the apartment, defending the apartment complex. Meanwhile, him and Kate have a fight and she leaves and because she like her background is that she is a rich character, right? Like her, her, her dad is rich, buys yeah, her whatever she right. wants. So he takes, she takes lucky with her and they go to LA uh, where she lives for a while because she doesn't want anything to do with Clint. Eye. 
<laughs> just wanted uh, to just take down like <laughs> Madame Mask because I think they couldn't come up with very many Hawkeye villains. I guess they had to borrow well, I some. Thought from. That was a very interesting villain too, because like you know, when Kate leaves, she's not leaving to go get anybody. Mm-hmm. No, she's just leaving because you know she recognizes that this person whose mantle she took up, right, yeah. is. I mean, he's just running his own life into the ground, she and has. she can't be there to keep cleaning up the like picking up the pieces and just watching this happen, you know. Um, and so he, she just had to leave. But then Madame Mask had like this obsession with her ever since like she you know, the tape, wears the <laughs> yeah, videotape. I love. It was such a small thing that you know superheroes do to villains all the time. But Madame Mask took that so seriously oh, that she's like from now until the end of time, I'm going to go get this girl and it's going to be on. And I thought she was a really neat, creepy villain the way that she would kind of get in there. I thought her story oh, yeah, was She really neat toyed too. with her too. Mm-hmm. It was, was interesting a to see that. Iron Man villain. Yeah. It's interesting to see her with Hawkeye. Um, I like the moment in the car though where she's holding, she tries to hold his hand in the limo, or right here. Yes. And she's telling she literally tells him, you know, between you and I, we make one good person. And I think that's yeah. true, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, it's not it's not a love relationship, but it's more of a how they complete each other in this kind of way. But that was really sweet and a really good way of putting it and looking at it from a nine panel page. I think it's a beautiful way of doing I it. I think so, too. Agreed. Uh, of course, Clint was sleeping at the time. Yeah. So he didn't even hear that really sweet comment. Um, so then, yeah, we, we, uh, because of the way that the story is done, it bounces back and forth, back and forth in time. And we go back to Kate Bishop being in LA, uh, like, doing these little, uh, fun little cases and yeah, getting on with detective Cottle, I think is the gentleman that she ends up getting on his nerves, which is hilarious. Um, and meets a mysterious person named Herman H. I think the PI, I think he's a PI turns out to be. Not so great of a guy because he's kind of part of Madame Mosk's whole plot against Kate Bishop, if you will. But. Yep, that's what the revelation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have that breakaway issue. So this is where it comes in handy, Maddie, because the next issue. After, so there's this huge fight, right? And what happens is Clint becomes deaf, right? And his, then his. Like, we don't know. He gets, he gets shot. And it, yes. that's, that's how it ends, right? Like, this page right here ends. Now, if you were reading this in chronological order, issue by issue, the next issue is the Christmas issue. It's the issue... No, I'm sorry. It's the dog issue with the super friends or winter friends. Oh, winter friends? Yeah. Which makes no sense to put right there. Now, and if I you're reading it in omnibus format, you're reading it this issue next, which is the Kate Bishop story you know, back in L.A. I, I read that. So, like, this whole okay. weird uh, cartoony dog issue, not was the not there. issue, wasn't even there. Oh, Wasn't in comicsology? No, I read I read Marvel Unlimited. So I read I read all, oh, all the Marvel Unlimited. And yeah, it w- wasn't even in there. So when I was flipping through this, same with um Young Avengers or whatever, like none of that was in there. So I didn't know until I got home today <laughs> and opened oh, up my office. That any of this was in here. It yeah, was I mean, it was an interesting it, uh, like interlude, like just in between. Yeah, it was, it was a, weird. I, I know it was a metaphor or parallel for you know, Hawkeye and his brother and Kate and then the rest of the Avengers. Like, I know that's pretty much the idea behind it. So just a fun little issue, I guess. <laughs> so in the aftermath of that fight, uh, Clint is left deaf and his brother's yes. in a wheelchair. Barney's in a wheelchair. And I like the way that issue's written. And we can, like I, like I said, we can talk about the, 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 the highlights of the the slickness yes. of these issues than the way that they're written. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to. And I think a lot of it is well, the way Yeah, and then let's just, let's just wrap up the main plot, though. And then Kate ends up coming back to Clint and help him out for the final fight. Yes. With because bro just, bosses here. Yes, because the bro bosses are now working with a league of evil associates. And I had to get Omar's help. Mr. Negative and Fisk, Owl and Hammerhead. Yeah. Ringmaster, Tombstone, and Swordmaster, is those, are they all the right ones? Yeah, and then Kate's dad. And Kate's dad, right at the end, we're surprised by that one. Because um, it turns out he also has been a client of Madame Masks to have a youthful body. Um, Which and Kate so, also knows. So before we end it, she's also 
she gets she asks him to get her out of jail and she says, I'm coming after you. That's right. I know great. what you're up to and I'm I'm gonna make you pay. It was a really great um segment. But yeah, so that like she comes back because all those people had hired that clown gentleman, Kazi, to kill Hawkeye, and now he's kind of him and the whole building band together to try to take out the tracksuit Dracula gang. I, I love that. Like the entire apartment complex is fighting back, and some and of them get <laughs> some of them get scared. They're like, "No, I can't do this. What am I doing? I'm not a hero." Now, I do have to ask: in issue twenty-two, did both of you gasp? Because I know the first time I read it, I gasped, and I'm like, "Fuck you, Matt Fraction!" Yes, I did. During I was like, this you scene, killed the dog again. What the hell? Yeah. Oh, I, I, well, I thought Lucky got killed. I did I too. Didn't do I really did. I was like, "There's no way," because you you can't get away with doing that. <laughs> like, you can't. Oh, you can. Know. <laughs> you are not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> like, it was oh. websites, you know, devoted to that, right? Like, does the dog die? And so you can check and see, like, okay, does the dog die in this movie? Does the dog <laughs> die in this? Oh yeah, I've checked it all the time. Like John what? Wick was not expecting it. I know that's off topic, but my god, yeah, um, yeah. So needless to say, the good guys win, and in the, the arc is over. Everybody's reunited. Clint's hanging out with all his beautiful ladies him and, in his him and Jessica life. make up penny tries to kiss them that girl who started all this mess or oh yeah the redhead yeah. penny right oh, and then we have the, uh, the alliance of evil right there that have all agreed to kill the all Hawkeyes these people and- <laughs> including kate kate's dad yes i cannot Mr. believe Bishop. that uh. and that's kind of where it is it ends well and, and then barney takes off with the money that he stole with yep, his new with girlfriend uh, what is her name uh what the hell's her name? Candace, I think, something like that. Candace, something like that, yeah. Yeah, takes off with the, uh, her and her kids, and then we end where we start with Kate and Clint shooting bo- uh, arrows. So yeah. now let, let's let's talk about this and what you all thought. Yeah. Uh, I, this is my second read through. Uh, the first time I read this, I'm gonna quote my friend Jess. Omni dog, and he says, "I have a hard time enjoying stories because I have a hard time. I have a lot of things in here that it, it, I'm bogged down by things that have happened in the past in in comic books. Okay, uh, I can't let go of those things. And when somebody is written out of character, it really bugs me. It bugs me to the point that I can't enjoy it. One of the big reasons why I don't like Brian Michael Bendis. Damn it! I I think that's the first time I've mentioned him in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why I really didn't enjoy this book as much the first time I read it. Had this book called Guy, like Hawk Guy, had it been called Hawk Guy and had nothing to do with the Avengers, this book would have been phenomenal. But the fact that you're using an Avenger, and not only that, but then the relationships that we've known for years, um, it, like it made it hard for me to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time around, I kind of like I I let go of that, and I'm like, okay, okay let's just go into it, just. Uh, you know, like a fresh take on Hawkeye, even though there's a lot of things I still have issues with, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, I enjoyed it a lot more this time around. Yeah. Uh, now, I was, uh, but I was reading this when it was coming out, and God bless. I remember the delays, and somebody brought this up in the chat. Issue 23 came out before issue 22. Like the first issue of yeah. the next arc. Yeah, because David uh, Aha, the, the artist, was so slow that That's what there were so read. many delays. It really, really, like, I don't know. It bogged down a lot of people, but so it's nice to have it in in, in collected editions. Um, um, the standout issue for me probably be well. No, you ladies go first. What was the standout issue for you all? Mandy, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think the the issues. I don't know why. Um, they kind of the standout issue for me would be the dog issue where Lucky is the protagonist in it. And he's kind of his, it's his like view of how this whole, how Clint's life is taking him. And he sees things that, you know, maybe the humans aren't seeing and the way it's drawn kind of like airplane directions on like one of those, like pull out things, like, you know, instructions on how to do certain things. I think that's adorable. So I really, really enjoyed um, that issue. And I like the issue, um, where they, the funny games, I think it's issue 15, where they do the cro- they have the crossword puzzle only because of what I think is so great about M- Matt Fraction's writing here is 
you know, when he has, when Barney's going through that crossword puzzle and he kind of mentions a few things that are almost like foreshadowing or they hint at like there's, you know, he says he has a guess about Polaroids and um, post-its and, you know, that are on like the bulletin boards. And then like um, the mention of a five letter word for a comic entertainer, which is referring to the assassin um, whose name fits that bill. And then at the very end of that issue is um, when they get shot and they're both laying there on the floor and Kate comes in, there's this really awesome visual and it can't get any more clearer of them on this checkered floor that looks like a crossword puzzle. Like that is to me, um, that I think that's wonderful because obviously that meant, you know, not only is the writer and it shows the writer and the artist were talking and we're getting, you know, we're in sync as far as what they were trying to show image wise um, in that issue. So that would be my second favorite issue. The dog That's, issue. Uh, yeah. That is definitely a uh, writer catering to his artist. Knowing yes. the strength of your artist is very important when you're, when you're writing comic books sometimes. Um, okay. So those two issues. What about you, Maddie? What What's the standout issue for you? Um. I think you can I choose the same ones. Well, I mean, I love, I mean, obviously the dog one's amazing. I think it was great. You know, that definitely stands out, but um, I, I really like when all the issues that follow um, Clint losing his hearing mm -hmm. and going deaf again, because I thought the way that was done was really neat. It's not interesting. It's, it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> We've had deaf characters before in comics and it's not like mm -hmm. this. It's not written like this. I thought that that using kind of like those instructional kind of thing, like motion yes. that you see in, in in sign language books, like that made a lot of sense. I think it was easy to understand because how do you show motion in a comic and show that they're you know the the correct signing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I I really liked that. Um, and I know we're gonna get more into like talking about overall layouts of stuff um, too. But so this part right here for the funeral, this like nine nine panel page which i love mm -hmm. nine panel yeah. pages i loved it yeah. mr miracle i love it in this it's great but this so i read you know this. who else likes that i'm sorry to interrupt the artists because they literally just can take the nine panel copy and paste routine like I oh i got was, nine panels drawn yeah. yes i love that I, I know that uh john byrne always loved that and uh, a couple of other comic book artists sorry go ahead so i was reading this um because i was reading on marvel unlimited i read i did a guided reading which yeah. means panel to panel. So for most of these, I'm not, I didn't read the whole page to like at once. Yeah. But it was really neat when I got to this part because you get to the funeral uh, and you see face and then you see black yeah. and then you see the thing and then you see black again. And then, and honestly, like, you know, I would recommend if, 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 you know, for any of our viewers that are watching this, definitely read it like in your omnibus format too. But um, I really recommend this book very much lends itself to a guided reading panel by panel approach because it feels very cinematic, like more so than other comics do. Not every comic translate is, translates as well. Sometimes it makes it easier to read, but it doesn't necessarily give you a different reading feeling. It definitely did for me with this. So I really- Yeah, when, when you were telling me that, the, I thought of the issues, like the dog issue and issues like that. And it feels like you're almost doing a motion comic, right? Like, yeah. I don't know if y'all remember motion comics or the '60s. Oh, I know some yeah, of the guys, Smotlock, like Smotlock, the the old uh, Marvel '60s cartoons, where they literally took panels from the comic book and just made their mouths move and things like that. In a way, like the Spider-Man '60s cartoon, those kind of cartoons. That like motion comics is what it reminds me of. Uh, so I was almost jealous when you were reading it that way because I would have loved to have read something like this in that in that way where it's yes. panel by panel you don't know what's coming next and then it surprises you yeah is this have we read a lot of comics with nine page panels um yeah have, have dark, we? dark phoenix saga Dark phoenix okay um yeah, a lot of the have, older they comics did have because few, yeah well i mean now a lot of art is done you know with uh computers and things like that but yeah. a lot of the old school artists love that because it's literally the the nine panels they can just use issue by issue was there another um yeah those cartoons were pretty bad smart luck you're I mean, right if, but if they we're were not gonna talk fun. about more issues honestly like i think it's worth talking about how often the artist switches up like the the, the overall layout of, of this because you can see a consistent style in like bursts yeah i really enjoyed seeing the differences as it went on i think 
I appreciate that's, how they changed yeah. based on which character was in the focus or which type of story was in the focus. Um, I, I was I, mean, I was really impressed with that. Honestly, just overall layout felt different than a lot of comic books that I've read recently. Yeah. It Agreed. felt really independent, like an indie comic book as opposed to a oh yeah Marvel or DC comic book is what yeah. it feels like. With I agree art. with that completely. I, I enjoyed the uh, the flood issue with Gil and his dad. Yeah, that one, that one got to me. That was, that was my favorite issue. Uh, art wise, you know, nothing special, but I think yeah. it was my favorite issue because of the way that it was written. Is that Fair. the same issue with uh, Kate going to the wedding as well? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Same okay. issue. It's split I wasn't a fan two. of that art. No. That part of it, but yeah, I did like that. I did appreciate the art for his the flood part with. Gil. Yeah, some of the fill in art in this isn't the best. I don't know why they decided to go, and I know one it's of certain the... people. Is it well, just because they just needed to get someone because Aha or Aja? I don't know. Oh, well, I know Francisco that. Francavilla. That guy. He yeah. like people love his art. I'm I've never been a big fan. Well, see, now he did the origin stories for the Clown Man and for Hawkeye. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I never liked some that of art. His, but I appreciated some of the artistic motifs that he did, like the breaking apart of, like, whenever you see Kazi, I guess. Right go, here? Yes, that stuff. He right. does it twice in both those stories. Once mm -hmm. for him, once for Hawkeye. And so I appreciate that. And um, you can tell, since they're both kind of origin stories, it... I appreciate the fact that the art was a little bit different, a little bit darker um, than um, the artwork for the rest of the stories. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he only did those two issues, and I think those yeah, are the two did. issues. I, I don't know. I never really liked his art. He also did. He did an arc in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, he's yeah, he, he, he came from an independent um, comic background, gotcha. so you can you can kind of tell. Uh, no, yeah. but I love how different each. Like just about each issue felt, uh, in the same sense that I love the coolness of like Cowboy Bebop. Each each episode of Cowboy Bebop had a different soundtrack, and it's cool when I speak like uh, talk like that because that's what Matt Fraction does. Kind of like with his uh, Sex Criminals, he gives you like a song list of li to listen to, like what you should be listening to oh, while you're, you're reading the wait, comic where book. Where is that? What page is that? I don't go through all these pages. Oh no, wait. It's this is the artist uh, playlist. Like, okay. So if you look all the way in the back, he gives you like who else oh, does this? Karen, that's what uh, that is. Wicked and Divine. What's his name? Karen Gillan. He does the same thing in his book. He's like yeah. or phonogram. Like you should read. You should listen to this while reading the comic book. I oh, bet shoot. somebody already made like a playlist on Spotify. Yes, they probably did. Now I have to go back and read it and listen to it like this. <laughs> uh, I yeah, we'll do that. I know Snot Girl does does that too. <laughs> And then Gabriel Piccolo has made like playlists for different characters he does art for, which mostly is just Teen Titans. But oh, I always love, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. No, I think mm -hmm. he, I, I, I hate to admit it, but I am too. Like as, as slick and sexy as that sounds, like doing things like that, I, I dig it. It's not, it's it. not pretentious enough, right? Which I think sometimes yeah. is the way some of these writers write. Where the hell is this issue that I really dug? It's the one that looks like a video game, like a side scroller video game. I really uh, love the art. It's got Wolverine and Spidey, and they're fighting. Oh yeah, on that, the street. Like, like so this is what happened earlier today. Oh shoot, which one is that? Is it issue six? No. Six. Yeah, that's um, it's it's early on. It's not it's not in the later runs, but it's it's early on. Um, that's what I was trying to find to show, like just the difference in the art styles. Like, let me see this issue right here. What is this issue? Which one? Uh, well, that's Pulido, so I can't use him. He reminds me a lot. This guy right here, Pulido, he reminds me a lot of Tim Sell's artwork. Oh, I found it. It is this issue, issue six. This would yeah, I love that because it looks like... Here, hold it up and I'll put it yeah. on you. It looks like a video game board, like an old school beat-em-up. That's what I love about that. And that's, well, that's what I appreciate about the story, too. Um, so all of the Marvel comics I've read outside of reading um, what we have to read for this show have been, like, Spider-Woman and Mockingbird. Um, and I notice a lot of it's, like, it's not so much superhero stories, 
with on a grand scale it's more of like almost day in the life stuff and then there's like some kind of threat in the background or a short little you know superhero story that's how this one felt too um mm -hmm. it was more about the person not much not less about the histor the heroic acts i guess if you will yeah and that seems to be the 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 thing to do in modern comics like they take the characters out of their element and put them in everyday situations uh um, yes. which I don't know. I, I kind of it, it's both hard to believe sometimes, and it's easy to get lost in. Uh, in the same sense, like they did with one, because we do like on Instagram, we're going to do recommendations, and I already have. I like reading this. I already knew what I was going to suggest because there are similar stories to this. What's that, Mister Miracle? Mister what? Mister Miracle. What am I saying, Mister Miracle? Is that Mr. what you suggest? I've only read the first issue. I'm I'm finishing it out this week, so I could review it. It's so bad. <laughs> um. But there are, there are several comics that are like that, and I, it seems it seems to me like it's been a modern thing to like like you all have said humanize these characters. I uh, certainly appreciate it because I think it I can connect with this better. I care more. Like so, then now with this because I've read this book, I'm going to care more if Hawkeye's involved in this in a big, yes. you know, crossover event between all the characters in Marvel. So like the next time that happens and I have him in there, I'm going to care. Oh, yeah. but see, then that, then that, then 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 you get into my problem, where oh, you get attached to that, where you get attached generation. to a certain writer writing the character, and then when yeah. somebody else comes along and sounds nothing oh, we, like we this, are already there. Listen, like you, think you've been reading comic books for two years, and I love other, that you're already there. my other Archer boy. Okay, you know, oh, well, like, yeah, yeah, he's written well. You know, had a lot of really real life issues, and then they were like, <laughs> Tom King's like, oh, look at this guy. No one cares about him. I and love I love the fact him. that that you said he's written well because I know that you read the Judd Winnick run, and I know some people hated his portrayal of Roy. I love it. I mean, I was a big Winnick guy. Like minus Heroes in Crisis, as far as Roy's concerned. But that's okay. I'm glad you got your glasses back, comic guy. That's yeah. Awesome. Um. Oh my God. Uh, Ivan, what was his name? Ivan Cordy, that guy. Oh Jesus! Uh, the Van Skyver issues weren't that I terrible. Superman. Yeah, I was like, well, who I said no one likes Superman? Listen, I love Superman. Okay, <laughs> that's Superman, my boy. Superman with a beard is where it's at during Dan I mean, Jurgens. Oh my God! Well, he started Rebirth with a beard, and I was—it was so good. And they just took it away from me too. Just like his son that's and everything else awesome. that they built. Honestly. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? <sighs> There's a couple things. Other things. Okay. So overall, I enjoy this a lot more this time around. Basically, because I was able to just distance myself from the character of Clint, from the character of Clint calling in Captain America to just come and whoop these guys' asses instead of handling things himself. his way. Yeah. Forgetting the fact that his brother has been a villain and. Yeah, when you told like me that, make, I was like surprised. humanizing this character to making me feel pity for him. Sure, I can forgive that. Whatever. Uh, what I did like, though, is that he brought back the idea of Clint being deaf. Because I know in some issues, like especially in the old school West Coast Avengers, like that was a thing. He was always supposed to be partially deaf. And yeah. I think they go back and touch upon it when he was a kid in a flashback. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always yeah, enjoyed the character of Kate. So she was. it was a nice break in between issues. I don't know. I know some people had problems with that, but I did not. I think it was well balanced because I like hearing about her story just as much as I did enjoyed his. Yeah. Uh, what's up, well, Abraham? Hawkeye. You know, I think I I would rather they both be in it if they're both Hawkeye. Exactly. And, That's and I felt like they were both the stars of the show, which I really appreciate, which you don't always see when you have like a legacy character, especially like a female one too. Not to bring that to that, but like that's, I mean, that's just the yeah. truth of a lot of these cases. Yeah. If you have a, a female legacy character, a lot of the times they don't get a lot of the same um, attention or 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 same level of success, right? So if you compare it to other, like, I mean, it's hard not to compare this to like more DC legacy characters because those are more male. Well, I think like Robins, they get a lot of like screen time, right? They've so also been around the, like. 50 more years than Marvel yeah, legacy I'm not, I'm not characters, right? That, that, you know, no, I mean, that was, that's the thing I'm that people forget. Other female yeah. legacy characters throughout comics, not just Marvel and DC. Oh, okay. I mean, Donna, she's never going to have her own thing. But anyways, they tried like, 
Remember? Yeah, like but during the late eighties, they they really issues. tried. But Let's... anyway, Wait, no matter what, though, Dick Grayson is never going to be that, Batman. Though. Like I really appreciated like having these two be like equal. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they're different too. Like it's it's not like she was following his footsteps and trying to be like they're just very different. And I really appreciate that about both of them. And they're both not perfect either, which was also nice just to read about two people that like are humans. There's regular people. Who shoot good, shoot and really well, <laughs> and they both mess up a lot, a lot, and that I like that about them. You, yeah. you reminded me, like I think, and I didn't mean to interrupt because I I had forgotten to mention, like that's this is, the Young Avengers is what started the whole legacy thing, right? Like DC yeah. has always had it, and yeah. it took them this yeah. long to borrow. Because Marvel was never about legacy. There was never going to be another Wolverine. There was never going to be another Captain America. There was never going to be yeah, another Cyclops. Good ones. And within the span of 12 years, they have all these characters that came out of nowhere, literally, yeah. and are now known as the legacy characters. But like I said, I mean, goddamn, Dick Grayson was Batman for, what, two years? Even he, yeah. who has been waiting to be Batman... Was only in Batman for two years before Bruce Wayne came back. So none, no, none of it is ever going to change. It's always going to be Clint Barton as Hawkeye. Even though it, she was Hawkeye for about a year and a half while he was yeah. dead. Uh, but yeah. I enjoyed that. God damn, Marvel. I love that. Book. We should read Young Avengers. I'd be down. Yeah, I'd be down to read it. Because I like that one issue that we got to read in the beginning of the Omnibus. So Or well, collected he- edition. What's his name? Heinberg wrote. Alan Heinberg wrote the original 12 issues. And it was amazing. But... In order to enjoy that, we have to read Avengers Disassemble to find out what makes this team come ah, together. Okay. Um, so we will one day. Uh, and speaking of reading, like, uh, by the way, thank you everybody that voted. Uh, we have over 430 votes. I yes, put a poll thank you on guys. YouTube. That's amazing. And so far, the, surprisingly, <laughs> the Kree Scroll War is winning because I put up like Civil War, Ultimates, um, Avengers Disassemble. And uh, the, what's it called? The Siege uh, story arc of uh, Final Threat. And then Kree Scroll War. And surprisingly, Kree Scroll War is winning by 30% after 430 votes. So if you didn't want that one, get in so there. So you may want to vote if you, if you haven't. Because I'm going to let it go until Friday. And then Friday we'll make the decision of yeah. what we will read next. And then right now it's looking. I think Avengers Disassemble is at 24% in second place. Yeah. Um, so thank you guys for not voting for that because I can go on with not reading that. Civil War yeah. sucks. The comic. What? The movie was awesome. Uh, Wait, that's another. That's another was... argument. That's another. That's another. Topic. No, the movie was way better than that comic. Oh my gosh, that comic was really rough. Wait a minute. What did Philip surprise me? Why does Kate suck? Oh, oh because he's, someone he's has asking said Kate somebody sucks. Kate sucks. Yeah. I love Kate. I like her run in yeah. Kelly T- Kelly Thompson's run has been awesome too. That's what Kenneth had said too, and that her run is really good. Um I'm gonna go on and, and, and say it. I like Kelly Thompson's Kate more than I did Matt Fraction's Kate. Really? I, yeah, I think Kate's a uh, Kate. I, uh, I think Kelly Thompson is a great writer that is also a fan, like a she's a fan first and a writer second. And that's what makes a damn good writer. Yeah. Or writer first. Sorry. Sorry. Writer first. Fan second. Sure. That's what I meant. That's what you meant. Yeah, I'm digging her run. Blasphemy, Omar. What? Oh, you Fraction fanboys. I'm not, I don't like Fraction that much. I never cared for his uncanny X-Men run. I never thought he understood the characters. Uh, mm-hmm. I like his uh, Casanova and, of course, his sex criminals. Those are solid. Yeah. But... <sighs> M.M. Um, is awesome. Yeah. She was. Madame Mask? Is that who? Is that I what we're talking about? Talk- Mr. Miracle. About that oh, one. Mr. Miracle? Okay, yeah. that's Man, I just want to read that story whenever Omar gets his hardcover. Okay, I've got a book. Just borrow from me. <laughs> okay, I'll just borrow it from you, and then I'll just wait to get my own copy. <laughs> <I'll laughs> oh, good idea. Um, Heroes in Crisis is the best. More than Infinity Crisis. Oh, my goodness. Come on, man. Now I'm you're just trolling. Your thing ever, like you're you're that welcome to opinion. Opinion. Oh my goodness, nobody has suggested oh, us better. doing Batgirls, the Stephanie Brown issues, which I are really only three. To. I know some people have really been asking me to read, um, not just hers, but Cassandra Cain's also. That's, that's my Batgirl. Cassandra Cain's my girl. I love that. I'd like to read both because I, I feel like you know because I, I love Batgirl right now. And I love Barbara, but I don't. Um, 
the most I know about the characters are like what I've seen of them in New Fifty Two and what I see of them now in Detective Comics. So I mean, I'm I'm very interested and open to reading more. Um, I'd love for you all to read Detective Comics because Cassandra Kane and Clayface are just. Oh, I've been reading it. The oh, Tinian run. Such good friends. No, yeah. I haven't read the Tomasi run yet. Um, I haven't either. I've got to catch but, up. But I've read the tin, the three Tinian hardcovers that I have. Or do I have two? Whatever I have, the 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 two that I have, they're solid. Uh, he's. I like I like what he did with those characters. I like the team and the family aspect of things. Okay, damn it, you got it, Smotluck. I did like Iron Fist, but don't forget Ed Brubaker co-wrote that with Matt Fraction. Just throwing so that it out wasn't there. just him by himself. I, yeah, I know Fraction has a huge like people really love the guy, but I don't know. He's yeah. he's he's, a, he's okay, and I like his style. I like um I like what he brings to comics, um, but. Sometimes it can be a little much, and sometimes I think he rather he rather show off than show his knowledge of yeah. the characters and understanding of the characters. Um, so <laughs> let's review this book before we go yeah, on. Yeah, let's you give our scores. Yeah, you ladies go first. Sure. Um, Stop I'll being a hater. You know, what? I I'll give it nine out of ten. Solid. I think it's really well done. I think I you know I think there was enough variety throughout that not just with story but with character or them. With art and layout, I was really impressed. Um, I love the colors. I love how cinematic it felt. Um, I thought it was really interesting. And I think, you know, I, I can see where, as like someone who is more familiar with Hawkeye going in and his story could be disappointed. But for someone who ha- who's read nothing, this is a character I can really get behind. And, and the relationship between him and Kate is something I can really get behind. So um, for me, it's nine, 9 out of 10 because I think I'd read again. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, I would. I think I'd also give it a nine out of ten. I really enjoyed the the way the story was told. Um, I like that it kind of jumped back and forth, and that you really get to see this more personal side of Hawkeye. For me, that's I love that kind of stuff with characters. The books where it's all you know, sometimes on a grander scale, and you don't get a much enough of the personal stuff I don't tend to connect with as much so I think I really did and I was so excited that Kate Bishop was in it and I enjoyed her story arc um how you know she kind of did her own thing and found her way back to Clint um because the two of them need each other you know whether you know be mentor mentee relationship they just need each other um and that was a very strong story I mean there's a lot of good story beats in this about family and about um you know, being there for people, and so nine out of ten. And I loved Aja's art, um, for the most part. That he is his is my favorite of all the artists that we that were were doing the artwork. So, yeah. So nine and nine. Mm-hmm. Um, well, this time around, I enjoyed it more. So, like I said, I separated myself from the characters and his background. Um, the art was amazing for the most part couple issues that I were eh. So, I think overall, I, uh, I give it an 8 out of 10. I think that's fair. 8 out of 10. Not my favorite book, but I definitely understand why it's a must-read. And I definitely recommend reading it. Yeah. And I think that the Pizza Dog issue is, of course, the issue. To get, and I think in an I want to say that in an omnibus and in a collected editions, I think this is the issue that they picked from this run to represent Hawkeye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, hey kids, do you read the chat? Yes, yes. we do. We do. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, wait a minute. That's a Spanish ha, 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 ha. Yep. So where's Paracon well, Iron from? Cardinal gave it an 8 out of 10. Make Havoc gave it a 9 out of 10. Mm, we're rounding it up. I love Joe's Chip's precise seven point six five. I'm to know what his seven point six five is. I love that. You know, you I love that. Type it's it in there. Seven point six five. We know that you love Fraction, but Tom King kiss his oh. ass from Argentina. That's why uh, I knew oh, the ha well, ha we ha. I haven't read any Tom King yet, to my best of my knowledge. So I can't speak to that. <laughs> uh, I, New reader I, over here. I, I didn't. I, I did think- not like Tom King's uh, Batman at first. I was like one of the few haters. And then his second arc got me. 
And now everybody seems to be jumping on the hate train because of the way that he set up issue 50. I I did marketing and not him. Yeah, but I mean, he's playing the long game, which... Yeah. He's playing the padding out game, which I hate in in comic books. Um, I I did like his... uh, What's it called? Vision book, though. I thought that was really good. It was a well-done story. And the... I really need to finish Mr. Miracle, but I've Is enjoyed you, what I've read so far. All in one run. Like, I feel like you need to, like, sit down and just wow. read that. See, in like, Vision... Don't, don't move from it. Just sit. Just Mr. Miracle. Nothing mm-hmm. else. Well, see, in Vision, it reminds me a lot of this. I mean, separating myself from that to enjoy that story. Because <laughs> it really doesn't make any sense in continuity-wise. Why he would have a family. Anyway. Um, yeah, eight. I think it's fair. I think it's a yeah. nine, nine, and an eight. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yes. Love when we're all around the same place. That's good. I don't think yeah. we've had an episode where one of us is like, I give it a two out of ten. This story sucked. No, we haven't hated something that much. Well, it, I think it's time to start reading some bad books that I remember being bad. Maybe you two will like. I would love to do an episode like that. Something that you think is just the worst. And then me and Maddie are like, that was so great. <laughs> I just want I mean, to find us something. Omar. I'm sure the chat can help me because I think yeah, most chat. of us agree. What is the worst it's in your mind? <laughs> well, see, I know a lot of people really like Identity Crisis, and I hate that fucking book. I still, I want to read Identity Crisis. Maddie I'm hated Velvet. Well, no, Maddie gave it a seven. Like, yeah, it she, surpri- she did surprise me. It wasn't like. I thought she would like it more. There's books that stick with me and like really change something, and there's books that are just like, okay, I read it. See, for Con, it's like when I read Hick Avengers, and I was like, I don't want to read this again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in the minority, but I like Avengers: The Crossing. Like, I know it is probably known as the worst Avengers story. Oh my god! But I know like people hate that story for Con. Um. Uh, see, because I think it, it, Avengers Disassemble was the same thing as Avengers The Crossing. You have the betrayal of Avengers and then death of Avengers. It's the same storyline. Man, this is going to be interesting. The ladies hated Phoenix Saga. They just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. That drunk... That was, that's a good thing I was drunk. That one, that one hurt. I took that personal. Like, I wrote the goddamn thing. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Avengers: The Crossing was not worth an hour movie. with the guy who did. It's so I think it. Uh, thank you. I'm glad somebody agrees. Smart luck. Thank you. Now my my opinions are invalid for all time. I think people know that about me that I like Avengers: The Crossing. It's it's weird. It's such a bad book that it it they had good elements. I mean, Dan Abden and Andy Lanning wrote some of that stuff. They went to blow up and do Annihilation. Yeah, 7 out of 10. What did y'all give Dark Phoenix Saga? Was it a 6.5 it was, or a 7 out of 10? It's like a 6.5 or a 7, something around those. Oh, we're reading more X-Men. I want to do an X-Men title every um, month. Um, Well, I want to read... I want to finish reading Wolverine and the X-Men anyways. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. Um, and Probably, honestly, I like a lot of the newer X-Men stuff, too. I know you don't. I love Jane No, Grey. because I'm bogged, I'm bogged down by... And normally, I hate Jane Grey. But I like the new stuff with y'all. Oh my movies. god, Maddie, what I know, the I'm hell? Sorry. You're like, Dark sure. Phoenix gets a 6.5. New Jean Grey gets a 9. I, I love it. I had fun with it. <sighs> Those characters sorry. overstay well, their havoc. welcome. Make havoc. We're glad you, you stuck with us even after our Phoenix saga review. I promise. <laughs> I was <going> to <laughs> like it was. <laughs> uh, I try to control that. I couldn't. Uh. You're also drunk. So. I was also drunk. You yeah. were yeah. really drunk. It's Best of the X Men was Onslaught Saga. Is this Gabe? Gabe, are you uh, like under a different pseudonym in here? No. Astonishing X Men. Okay. Onslaught. Astonishing X Men is a must, right? But man, it, it feels like I, I I want to I want to read a little more X Men and then get to Astonishing, so uh, the ladies will appreciate it a lot more. Because Astonishing goes a lot with nostalgia, right? And nostalgia is hard to read, like. I guess you don't really have to have it as long as you have to like an understanding of the characters and their past well, relationships. So, I mean, like, Whedon Amanda, does a really good job. Amanda, what? How much um, background do you have with X Men? Did you watch any of the cartoons or anything? Or yeah, when I was younger, um, I watched the cartoons, collected the 
trading cards. <laughs> okay. And then, of well, course, yeah. I've seen every movie. So then Amanda and I at least have like it's not like going in blind to new. Yeah. Or I would I think watched I have- all of Evolution yeah. and the other cartoon. <laughs> hey, well then you're gonna love um, X Force by Christopher yeah. Yost and Kyle. Uh, yeah, Chris yeah. Yost and uh, what's his name, Kyle, who also went on to write two films: one that sucked, one that did not. One called Thor Two, one called Thor Ragnarok. But I blame the directors on that. But anyway, no, these guys went. These guys that started off in X Men Evolution, uh, that's where X Twenty Three came from, the cartoon. So they brought her into the comic books, yeah. And uh, Chris Claremont wrote her, and then they wrote her in X twenty three miniseries, and then they were like, "Okay, we're gonna have our own X Force book." And the X Force book was so good. They were behind yeah. all the Messiah War, the Messiah Complex, and the Second Coming. Those stories are awesome. Yeah, um, Paticon, are you asking about the? You're asking about the movie. Well, we we're in luck because we reviewed it, and you can see that on our channel if you go <laughs> to it right now and check it out. Man, yeah, but not you before you leave this. I did it because I, I loved that movie so much. I want to talk to you guys about it. <laughs> oh, God. It was so fun. It was so fun. What would you have given it, Maddie? Yeah, what would you have given it? Sam? Yeah. Oh, gosh. As far... Okay, so... It's hard because it, if I think about Marvel movies at all, it's hard to compare. But I think if I... I'm just thinking DC. I'd say like an 8 or 9 out of 10 if I had to put a number to it. It's really fun. Yeah, I think... You know? I, I, I give I've it a 9 point. It. Pacing was really good. Hmm. You know, the Adam Brody was, was in it. What is Oh my god, if I have to hear that fucker's <laughs> name again. <laughs> oh man, but, it was first in a theater with us. I was freaking out the yeah, whole time. She was. Like, because it's South Philadelphia. Off. And I went, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, guys. That's where I was born and raised. Um, and I went to school. I spent five years in Philadelphia. That is like my second home. So to see all that stuff, the Gino steak that he stole. Oh my gosh. I just was having a heart attack the whole time. <laughs> so excited. Yeah. Oh, oh, did you guys hear the, um, did you guys see the rocks announcement that he's going to be black Adam? Yes. Well, he produced that. Yeah. I didn't uh, know I'm the one that pointed it out. And um, Amanda was like, are you sure that's the, the Wayne, the Wayne rock Johnson? Johnson? <laughs> oh my God. Damn. Yes, it is. Look. <laughs> Yeah, it, it. It. Oh, uh, no, it was it was a really fun movie. Okay, so while we've been talking about Shazam, everybody's been talking <laughs> about what other runs were really <laughs> good. <laughs> and I I agree, Smotlock. If it wasn't for Peter David or Fabian CSM, I would have left comic books back then, like in the nineties. I would have left a lot earlier than I did, but I lasted all the way to Onslaught. And Onslaught, that was it. I was out. I couldn't do it anymore. And then Grant Morrison's new X Men brought me back into comics. Yeah. Uh, Joe suggested we do uh, Jason Aaron's Wolverine instead of another X Men story, and he you know how much I love Aaron. So if we want to do that, I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of like his first Wolverine omnibus is pretty good. Second one is solid. Wolverine and the X Men is fun, but not because Wolverine's in it, but because of the kids. Like it's what makes it fun. He is. Is that the one bro- where he's the head of the school? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Love Pat Aquaman, Hulk, Supergirl. Oh God, yeah, all those. Mm-hmm. All those are good. Onslaught was great. Onslaught was bad. That's so awesome. I love reading comments like that back to back. Yeah, <laughs> two people. Now, if you ask me if I own the Onslaught omnibus, you fucking right I do, because I'm well, a Cletus. You are. I like to relive all those bad stories. Only with X Men. Is that Astonishing Ant Man? Is that the one that uh, what's his name? Nick Spencer. Right? Yes, that Nick, Nick I bought the first that. volume. Yeah, I'm excited to read that. I just got that one, Basti Bueno. So I'm excited. Patacon, are you talking about Wolverine and the X Men is better than Infinity War, the movie, or the Infinity War, the comic book story? Because Wolverine and the X Men is better than Infinity War, the comic book. I'll agree with that. Uh, Astonishing Ant Man was, it, it was hit and miss, kind of. I like his uh, Deadly Foes of Spider-Man better, which is another book I was going to suggest reading this when we read this. Oh, really? Omar will buy expensive comic books he hates. You're goddamn right I will. will. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm an idiot. Uh, Patacon, the movie. Uh, Wolverine and the X-Men, the comic better than Infinity War. Man, that is two different mediums. I, I don't even know how to answer <laughs> that. Like, you did ask if you think Endgame will be better. I got to hope Endgame's going to be better. Better, better than Infinity War? 21 odd year movies. Oh, the movie bored you? Man, I love the way the movie. That was like the Empire Strikes Backs of Marvel movies. I loved it. Bad guy wins 
Awesome. Bad guy Sorry, too. spoilers for anybody who hasn't watched it. Yeah, please go back and watch it. I would have, if anyone in our chat has not watched it, I'd be surprised. So Furkan says his favorite Wolverine was Ruckus Run. That was a good run. That was a real. That was another one of these realistic takes on superheroes, kind of drawn by Derek Robertson. Um, my Wolverine is Larry Hama. I've always enjoyed his run. I thought he made the character who he was. Um, he he really played to the strength of what uh, Claremont made. Comic is always better than the movie. That is true. That Civil is true. War? Civil War. Oh fuck, Amanda! You bring up a good point. You're right. The saying, comic books I'm, suck. I'm, I read the comic and I saw the movie, and I got to give it to the Russo brothers over the comic. I'm sorry. Wait <laughs> a minute. Who's tense. reading Rainbow Bright? My daughters. They started reading Rainbow Bright. There's Rainbow Bright comics. I get this for yeah. my daughter. She would love them. I used to. Superior Force Spider Man's my favorite Spencer comic book, but I love Fix. Okay, I need to read the Fix and Astonishing Ant Man too. I like Superior Foes or Deadly Foes of Spider Man. Um, a little more than I did. No, I liked it a lot more than I did his Ant Man run. I, I, I didn't really like it. Wow. Paticon. Oh, Maybe it's the translation. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, no. I don't really like that kid in Spider Man 3. I'll say I mean, Iron Man, Man 3. Buddy. Anyone watch? I just want that guy to be in something. Um, yeah, and speaking World. of, as Paticon mentions that, we are the, the three of us after we see Endgame. We are going to do a um, ranking of our Marvel movies, like what we think is the best and what we thought was the worst out of all of them. A huge culmination. So, uh, wait a minute. What time are we seeing it, Amanda? What time are we seeing it? Twenty fifth. I don't know. Motherfucker. Fork on. How are you seeing the twenty fourth? He doesn't live here. He lives. Oh, uh, lucky. Uh, yeah, <laughs> live in the states. He's gonna text me all the spoilers. Dude, do you do it. that, I will text Amanda. <laughs> don't. But she doesn't me. care about spoilers. I don't. I'll still cry at it. It doesn't matter. I love that you're already calling it that you're gonna be crying. Oh, I. Like, have she's to gonna have to wear a damn adult diaper when we go see this movie. By the way, because I'm not letting her get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm just gonna get a big tub of popcorn. Popcorn. Let eat it all. Or accidentally spill it, because that happens at every time I'm at a movie. And then I'll just use that. Uh, yeah, we have Smotlock. We have seen Shazam. We reviewed it. Yep. We reviewed you should, it. You should go see it. You should go see it. <laughs> hey, yeah. funny. Okay, did anyone else notice, if who has seen Shazam, that in both Captain Marvel movies, Jaiman Hunsau is yeah. in the movie? What the yeah. heck? That man just works so damn hard. I'm Can the one that said movie? that to you. I did pointed you at it. Really? Yes. I, that. I was too busy geeking oh, out. Oh, you were geeking out over <laughs> dumb things like yeah, Adam after, Brody. After we saw it, um, Elliot was like, I was really, he said, Elliot said he was really sad not to watch it with you, Amanda, <laughs> because this is his favorite thing to watch your reaction to movies. Don't worry. Wait till he's he, like, he gets to see me in an surprise to Amanda. <laughs> he's just so surprised and excited with everything that happens. I am. Even if it's not that surprising. I think I got scared at a couple of parts and jumped and Tommy, our cousin, my cousin, Omar's brother, started laughing at me. I was like, what? It can't be a little scary? The seven deadly sins were a little <laughs> terrifying, if not just no, scary. The best part is you were you even called when you were going to jump. You're like, oh my god, are they going to do an Independence Day kind of thing where the hand's going to stick to the glass? Oh, that's right! They did And I'm like, too. yeah, they're totally going to do that. And then they <laughs> did it, and you still jumped, and I'm like, what that's the hell's wrong with you? Day. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Trial of Gambit movie, you <laughs> bastard. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, Paracon, you say peruano. Pero estoy viviendo acá casi 35, 36 años. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to watch Endgame. It's going to be awesome. She's so expressive, except that Transformers. Shut up, <laughs> Tina. That's because right. she has no I'm soul. Tina the same way. Yeah, we're all, I think all of us are yeah, the same way. Tina was asleep. She didn't even give it a fair <laughs> shot. She went to sleep. back to Japan, like, what, two days before that? <laughs> That's no excuse. That soundtrack alone should wake you up. I love ceviche, man. I <clears throat> fucking love ceviche. And so oh. does my wife. I like a, yes, a Gambit movie with Channing Tatum. If that no, <laughs> no. What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> hey, For Quan, goes, What's that? Joe's gave you an excellent Spanish accent, Omar. Good job. Thank you, Joe. 
I think he's Canadian, so that counts. Endgame was going to be the best Marvel movie. Was? Was. What happened, Bats? <laughs> so what? Not anymore. Not anymore. Now the best Marvel <laughs> movie is going to be home. Eternals. <laughs> that <What>? was. <laughs> it's hard to believe Omar's second language is English. Sometimes. <laughs> you see when he texts. It's not. You be. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> anyway. Anyhow. Um, okay, so. Yeah. So what do we got cooking for next week? We've got oh. Green Arrow. That's right. That's we right. got Kevin Smith's Green Arrow coming at you. That's yes. what we're going to talk about. I think there's 15 issues altogether. Something or 11 like issues, something like that. Speaking of Kevin yeah. Smith, everyone who's watching this, go watch Tusk, but don't look at look, don't look at anything about it. <laughs> this is my recommendation to you. Everyone at home, listen. Don't look up anything about Kevin Smith's movie Tusk. Just go watch it. You'll be disappointed, probably, but I don't care. <laughs> go watch it. <laughs> okay, so Furquan's from Malaysia. And Maddie, you need to stop spreading the love of Tusk because uh, uh, that movie was not worth spreading the oh, love for. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Well, somebody somebody said Tusk is hel- uh, hilarious. Basti Bueno's from the Philippines. Iron Carnal just threw up because you suggested Tusk. <laughs> Good job, Iron Carnal. I want everybody to have, to have the same experience that I went in with. Spotlock, you didn't. Li- oh man, I thought we were blood brothers, man. You didn't like Red State, but loved Tusk. I loved Red State. Actually, I would have liked it better if if he had gotten his ending that he wanted to do, where the actual apocalypse happened. But whatever. He came up with Tusk while super high on his podcast. I Why do that. I not not believe that? Sometimes I, I think back to that movie and I'm like, yep. I know, like, I don't smoke, but I feel like I was high during that entire movie. It had to be, I think. It's a weird movie. It, it is the weirdest. I don't even think it's like torture, like, movie. That's so funny. Tusk was god awful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it is. No, it is. Absolutely. Omar, Absolutely. show me the doll behind you. Which no, one? You talking about trunks? He is no doll. <laughs> he is a man. <laughs> uh, you're talking about these little guys, the Scotty Young figures. I don't know which one you're talking about. I have several action like figures. Dolls. I don't have fucking dolls, Amanda. I'm, I'm I have, sure dolls. have dolls. <laughs> Not here, but I have dolls. Do a double feature of Tusk and HC. Sure. The other side. Oh, this okay. side. Okay. Um, the Cyclops? This Cyclops right here? Or the Thor Ragnarok? Oh, what he said. The what? The, the small Thor. one. This guy? The Thor Ragnarok? That too big. That's big? Okay. Uh, this is Cyclops. This is from a Japanese vending machine. That's why he looks very... Japanese? Not anime. Right. Not Japanese. <laughs> anime. is <laughs> where I was going to go with him, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cyclops, that's who it is. Uh, this is his ultimate X Men costume. So I got this a while back. Um, I got several like that. This is my Wolverine. I can show this off because I'm doing a book tour coming in April right. sometime. End, end of April, right? End of April, yes, I promise. I am yes. doing a uh, updated book. tour. It's been almost two years, so it's time to do it. And the next time I do it, I hope to do it from another location. So from McDonald's. No, that's not from McDonald's, from Japan. <laughs> no one has told Omar he's too big. False. Make havoc. Quit spreading lies about me. Uh, let's see. Embrace your love of dolls some more. Collectibles. Thank you, Tina. Collectibles. Yes. Now, was there anything else left in the chat, or are you ladies ready to call it a night? Yep. Yep. Um. Well, yeah, so we know we're, we're good. reading Green Arrow. Yep. We're reading Green Arrow, and then the following week, so we are reading Green Arrow for Tuesday the 16th. On the 23rd, like I said, we have that poll up in on YouTube, and right now the Cree Scroll War is winning. So if you want to go vote, go to our channel. I think you have to hit on the community tab and then do a poll. We have over 430 votes. So, yep. uh, Guys, do you have any CGC comics? No, uh, I do not. Not, not yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Yeah. Um, so thank yeah, you, see everybody. See a lot of C2E2. <laughs> yes, yes. There's a big uh, market out there for it. All right, everyone. Got to go. Okay. Bye, Farquan. Thank you, Bye, brother. Bye, Farquan. Have for, fun with that watching. lecture.
And yeah, my mini me is distracted by How to Train Your Dragon two downstairs. So yeah, my dog is just over here looking at me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <go out. laughs> hold on. There, this is a good question. Damn it. Okay, 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 hold on. Thanos has realized there are too many X books in the universe. So before he snaps his finger and erases every story, he comes to you, Omar, to pick the three that stick around. Oh my God! I have been waiting years for somebody to ask me questions like this. Oh boy. Uh, okay. <laughs> in no particular order, before we sign off, top like the three stories that I would keep around: God Loves, Man Kills, the most important mm -hmm. X Men story, which we read on this show before. Um, oh my God, the Chris Claremont X Men. I'm going to go ahead and cheat and say all 17 years of Chris Claremont. <laughs> That's one big giant book. I can I do it. Don't think that. And astonishing X Men. There you go. Those three right there. Bam. Oh my gosh. Thank you for asking that wonderful question. Yes. All right, Panda. Signs Sign us off. off. Okay. Um. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of more great near mint condition content. Um. We do have our panel episode this Thursday. It's a it's a Firefly episode about whether or not to reboot or revive. So get your arguments ready for the comments. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Um, we also have a review of Hellboy coming out on Saturday. So if you want to see what we thought of David Harbour's version of it, um, check that out on Saturday. Uh, remember, we also started a Patreon. Um, so if you want to support us, you can. the link is in our description in our bio on all of our social media channels. We have some different tiers with great uh, benefits for any of our patrons who do sign up and want to support us that way. We appreciate all of you that do. Um, don't forget to uh, follow us on all of our social media channels at, at Near Mint Con. And remember everyone, if it's classy and cool, it must be Near Mint. Have a great evening, afternoon, morning, whenever you're watching this. <laughs> Nice guy. Thank right. you, Amanda. Uh, I do get one more, and I'm going to go with.